Jiggy cat on a damn finna spree. This is not good, so and you can't mimic my energy. 100 round drum and me hanging like a center. Hey everyone, it's me Nagato's Adventure. Hope you guys are having an awesome day for today. And as the title states, I'm going to be teaching you guys on how to play classic Wonder Swan games on your modded PlayStation Vita or on your modded PlayStation TV. With that being all out the way as well, we're going to go ahead and get started on today's prerequisites. And everything I'll state will be in the link in the description down below. And I will have useful links as all the programs will be in the link in the description as well. So first things first, you need a modded PlayStation TV or a modded PlayStation Vita that's already hacked. So whether you're using the latest um, exploit which is Aton Core 2 or if you're using something from 3.60 like I am like Hankaku Enzo, Hankaku or Aton Core or Trinity as long as your PlayStation Vita or your PSTV is modded in some shape or form you can do this process. Um, This works from between firmwares 3.60 to 3.73 as well. You'll also need the latest build of Vita Shell. You'll also need the latest build of RetroArch. And as I'm recording this as of November 25th, 2019, the latest build is 1.8.1, I believe, for RetroArch. So that's the latest build that they released on their website. You also need a pack of Wondersong ROMs or, you know, set of games. I won't provide any links on how to get those. But for today, in terms of transferring your files, you could either use a USB cable via the one you use to charge with, or you could be using files of the FTP client for, you know, transferring our files over today i always recommend for people to just transfer their files with v over vita shell with a usb cable since it's much faster than doing files on the ftb client unless you have really great internet but for me since i'm going to be live streaming my playstation vita via with obs that's the only reason why i use filezilla but with that being getting out the way for the prerequisites for today i just want to go ahead and give a special thanks out to the retroarch developers so for creating a really great emulator for the playstation vita as well as a multitude of systems but don't forget if you have any questions or concerns you could go ahead and join my official discord if you need any help there's the link in the description right on the screen but with all that getting out the way let's go ahead and transfer over to the playstation vita and now get this set up Alrighty guys, assuming that you did follow all the prerequisites as stated in the intro, we're going to go ahead and get started on the PlayStation Vita side of things first. So first things first, just make sure your PS Vita is modified for this process. So if you don't already have a PlayStation Vita that's modified in some shape or form, I'll just have a card right now that will pop up to showcase on how to basically hack your Vita or your PS TV on the latest firmware, which is 3.73. And as well for this process, please make sure you already have Vita Shell installed on your system. So I will have that in the link in the description down below for the latest build of Vita Shell as well but what we what we're going to need to do is just go ahead and open up to Vita Shell and then once you're into Vita Shell we're going to have to basically transfer our files over so what we need to do now is either if you're going to be using a USB connection just go ahead and hit start on your Vita and then make sure where it says select button, make sure it's toggled over to USB. So make sure your um, USB cable is plugged in from your PC to your PlayStation Vita. But if you're gonna be using the files of the FTP method or just any FTP client of your choice, make sure you toggled um, this button right here to left or right to basically switch it to FTP. And then once you're into FTP like me, what we're gonna do is hit circle once and then make sure your Wi-Fi is on for this as well. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit select on our system and then you should see your ftp server now running so your ip will be different than mine but what you want to do is just leave your playstation vita or your ps tv for standby and then what we're going to do is go to our pc all right since we're on the pc side of things as of right now and i'm assuming that your playstation vita's ftp server is up or your usb cable is connected and you already have your usb um cable connected by hitting select what we're going to do now is go ahead and get our files to transfer over but first things first what you need to do is go in the link in the description down below you need to get the latest build of retroart.vbk it should be 169 megabytes as i hover it over here and what you need to do is go ahead and create a new folder on your desktop you could do this by just right clicking, hit new, and then you can label it as Bandai Wonder Swan. I'm not going to type it in since I already have my folder already created. So let me just put this in a recycling bin. But what you want to do is go ahead and label a folder and just call it Bandai Wonder Swan. And then what you're going to do is go ahead and put all your Wonder Swan games into this folder. So for today's test game, I'm just going to be using Pocket Fighter. But if you want to add, you know, multiple games, you can. So for example, if I go into my, um, my games folder right here 
Bandai Wonderswan. Um, you can see that I have all of my Wonderswan games into one folder. So that's how basically you would do it for this process as well if you were adding multiple games. But just for time constraints and just, you know, making a video quick, that's why I'm just going to be using one game for this method. So what we're going to do now is go ahead, if you're using an FTP method like me, is just open up FileZilla FTP client. If you don't already have FileZilla on your PC and you need to install it, I will have the exe on basically where to get this file from. And then you could just install it like any, you know, any executable on Windows 10 but what we need to do now where it says host in our port once FileZilla is up on your PC we need to go ahead and type in our PlayStation Vita's IP address yours will be different from mine's but I will have a picture that will pop up on the screen so you know what I'm talking about in terms of our IP our ports will be the same and it'll just display it on Vita shelf so all you gotta do is type in 1337 and then all you have to do from here is hit quick connect and you should see all of your PlayStation Vita's directories so what we're gonna do now Let's just go ahead and take this retroarc.vpk as well as our folder that we just created called Bandai Wonderswan and with our game in, we're just going to go ahead and drag these two to UX0 aka our memory card. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and overwrite this since it's probably an older build of RetroArch. But what I'm going to do now is cut the video here. Um, it's taking its time to basically transfer over um, our content. So once it's fully done, it will be in a successful transfers um, section right here. And then I'll showcase that. And then we're going to go ahead and get this all set up on the PlayStation Vita side of things. All right, guys. So as showcased here as well, all of my files have successfully transferred over. But uh, what I like to do before we even go to our PlayStation Vita, let's just verify that RetroArch is in the um, correct directory. So what we're going to do is just double click on UX0, aka your memory card. I'm going to scroll down. You can see that my Bandai Wonderswan folder has now been in this directory. You can see now my Pocket Fighter game is in here as well. And if we scroll all the way down, you can see that RetroArch.VPK is now here as well. So what we're going to do now is just exit out of FileZilla and then we're going to transfer back to our PC. I mean our PlayStation Vita. Alright, so we're back onto the PlayStation Vita as showcased here. So if you're using a USB connection or a FTP server, all we got to do is just go ahead and hit circle on our device. Now, if you look into UX0, you should see that Bandai Wonderswan or basically your folder where you have your games at. And basically all your games should be in here. So here's Pocket Fighter. And now we need to go ahead and scroll all the way down where we see RetroArc.VPK. And we're just going to go ahead and hit X to install this package. And then once um, RetroArch has fully installed onto our device, what we're going to do is just run it and then we're going to go ahead and play some Wonderswan classic games on our PlayStation Vita. So what I may do right now, since it may take a little while for it to install, I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video here. And then once it's fully done or it's near done, I'm going to go ahead and come back. Alrighty, so RetroArch has basically successfully installed onto my device. What we're going to do now is just go ahead and back out of Vita Shell by pressing the home button. Go ahead and hit circle out of here. And what we're going to do now is just reload RetroArch. So let's go ahead and install it. Yours will be probably bouncing up as a bubble, but since I had an older build installed, I'm just, you know, rewriting over a new one. So that's why the bubble didn't pop up on my left area. Now, what we're going to do is just go ahead and we're going to go ahead and load our core. I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way down where it says Bandai Wonderswan Games. Hit circle on that. What it's doing now is basically loading up the emulator that we want to play our games or where our ROMs will be playable at. Now what we need to do is scroll down to where it says load content. Hit circle. Go into UX0. Find a folder where we have our games at. So that's why I called it uh, Bandai Wonderswan. And now here is Pocket Fighter. Just go ahead and hit circle. And now what it will do, it will take a second for the game to boot up, but I'll play some audio real quick. I won't play too much because maybe copyright issues, but as you can see, you can still tell I'm on my PlayStation Vita. Um, this is Wonderswan Games playing on my PlayStation Vita, which is pretty cool, especially if you've never owned a Wonderswan. So here is Pocket Fighter running in real time. I've tested out um, some gameplay of this, so I'm going to go ahead and play as Ryu. So here's just some minor gameplay, but yeah, essentially this is how you set up Wonderswan classic games on a PlayStation Vita or on your PS TV. If you guys did have any troubles in setting this up, please let me know in the link in the description down below or in the comment section, I mean, or you can join my discord. But yep, if you guys did enjoy, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. 
Hey everyone, it's me Nagato's Adventure. Hope you guys did enjoy today's video. With that being out the way as well, I highly do recommend that y'all guys go ahead and follow my social media so you never miss any of the latest hacking guides and tutorials on my channel by subscribing to me and hitting that notification button as well. It's another method on how you will know when I drop my latest content, whether it be for the Vita, PS4, PS3, and such and so forth. As well, if you want to be in the mix of things and you want to join my official community, you can join via the link right now showcased on the screen and join my discord that way and if you do want to support my channel in any shape or form you could become a patron i will have a card right now but with all of that getting out the way hope you guys really did enjoy this video and i'll see y'all next time peace